Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal, invites you to rocket into the future with... Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. Stand by to raise ship. Blast off minus five, four, three, two, one, zero. Roaring rockets blast off to distant planets and far-flung stars. We take you to the age of the conquest of space with Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. Five hundred million miles out in the cold black depths of space, a small rocket scout blasts across the invisible path marking the orbit of Jupiter on course to Earth. In the narrow cylindrical cockpit forward near the nose of the silvery ship, the pilot transmits a routine teleceiver call across the void. And in a small metal hut on Mars, a sleepy-eyed operator shakes himself awake as the call crackles in his earphones. Rocket Scout 4J9 from Space Station M5. Go ahead. This is 4J9, Space Mail Service, Titan Colony to Earth. Position. Crossing orbit of Jupiter, northwest quadrant, five decimal zero four zero. Holding course one six zero. What's the reason? What's wrong with you? Scout 4J9 from Space Station M5. Come in. Great, Ganymede. M5 to all space stations. M5 to all space stations. Stand by. Disaster alert. Stand by. Here's the story, Captain Strong. Two days ago, Captain Mitch Parker was inbound from Titan on the Earth-Titan mail run. He made routine teleceiver contact with Space Station M5 on Mars to give position and standard data. Suddenly, contact was broken for some unknown reason. We haven't been able to raise him since. Any search operations underway, Commander Arkwright? Of course. I sent all patrol ships into the area immediately. Even pulled rocket liners and space freighters off orbit. But they haven't found a trace of Parker... Or his ship. Well, it's only been two days, sir. I realize that. But the ships that are looking for Parker now have to be released. I'm organizing a full-scale rescue operation to begin tomorrow. Do you think your cadet crew is experienced enough for an assignment like this? For the Polaris crew? Of course, sir. It'll be a long and difficult search, Strong. Even dangerous. Don't worry about them, sir. Tom Corbett, Astro, and Roger Manning are the best cadets in the academy. In spirit, teamwork, and cooperation, they excel at... Oh, uh, excuse me, Strong. Uh, yes, sir. Come in. Polaris unit reporting, sir. Great Jupiter. Tom, what happened to you? What happened to all of them? They look like they've been through a reaction chamber. Well, Tom? The officer of the day told us to report to you for disciplinary action, Commander Arkwright. Disciplinary action? What's the charge? We're charged with fighting and wrecking the furniture in our dormitory, sir. I see. Well, Captain Strong, so this is your Polaris crew. Is this what you call teamwork, spirit, and cooperation? Well, boys, I managed to square it with Commander Arkwright for you. He won't take any disciplinary action until this mission is over. Oh, that's great, Captain Strong. Swell, I knew you'd come through for us, Skipper. But now I want to know what this is all about. Why, uh... Who started uh, it this time? Well, I'm waiting for an answer. Sir, I, I think I can explain. I'd be interested in something like that, Corbett. Well... Astro and Roger had had a difference of opinion, and I tried to settle it, and Roger disagreed with me, and Astro disagreed too, and, well, I disagreed with both of them, and the next thing I knew that, well, the bunk fell on Astro and the table was knocked over, and... And you just tore your uniform, and Roger happened to grow that black eye, hmm? and Astro accidentally cut his lip. Uh, I guess so. All right. Now get this, all of you. The next time I catch the three of you fighting, I'm going to make earthworms out of you. 
You'll do all your rocketeering in the mess hall with a bucket and mop. You understand? Right, yes, sir. All right. Dismissed. Oh, what a crew. Uh, Captain Strong here. This is Commander Ackerman. Oh, yes, sir. Alert your crew for immediate blast off. Immediate? But I thought you said One that... One of the space freighters found a trace of reaction mass between Jupiter and the asteroid belt. From Parker's ship? No way of telling it. But if he kills us into this fuel, he may be in serious trouble and completely helpless. You've got to work fast if you're going to save him. <laughs> We'll return to the exciting adventures of Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, in just a moment, so stand by. Attention, crew. We've cleared Earth's atmosphere on course to asteroid belt. A giant search operation has begun. A search through the vast reaches of space for a missing rocket scout. And now, as the rocket crew of Polaris blasts through the void at full space speed, Captain Strong briefs his cadet crew. Now, according to the last report from Central Control, traces of reaction mass have been found near the asteroid belt. Mass that might have been jettisoned from Captain Parker's ship. Jettisoned, Captain? Or would there have been a leak in the hull? No, that remains to be seen. In any case, the Vega, the Hydra, and the three rocket destroyers are already tracking down the mass. We are going to take a shortcut. What do you mean, shortcut, sir? Corbett, if you were on a rocket scout ship and developed trouble, what would you do? Well, if I couldn't repair it in space, I'd call for help. You'd need it. Cut that, Manning. Now, if your communications were destroyed, what would you do? Well, I'd try to set down somewhere and see if I could repair her. Right. Now, wouldn't it be logical to assume that that's what Captain Parker did? But where could he land, sir? The only space junk of any size around here is in the asteroid belt. Right, Astro. And we're going to go through the asteroid belt and look for him. Through it? Oh, brother, this is going to be rough. No, rough isn't the word, Manning, but I think it's our best bet. I guess you're right, Captain. If the ship can take it, we can, sir. All right. You can relax for a while now. Maintain your usual four-hour deck watches until we reach our search position. I'm going topside to contact Commander Rockwright for further orders. And, by the way, in case you don't remember, Academy regulations hold good on shipboard. No fighting. Yes, sir. <laughs> Lucky thing for you guys. What do you mean, Roger? That no fighting order. I'd like to wrap you guys up good. Oh, now listen, Roger. Have you still got that chip on your shoulder? Let's forget it. We were all off our orbit. No, Junior, only you. We're all in the same unit, so I have to ride along with you. But that doesn't mean I like Why, it. you big sore head? Hold it, Astro. Look, for the last time, Roger, you're making too much of this. Astro didn't mean what he said, and neither did I. So how about shaking hands and forgetting it? Uh, if Tom is willing, it's all mine. Fellas, I got a hot space flash for you. Go blow your jets. Control deck to radar bridge. Check in. Radar bridge, aye. How are we doing, Manny? Now, don't worry about the small pieces of space junk. We can shed those. It's the big stuff we have to avoid. But don't worry, sir. I can play tag with these asteroids all day. Now, don't get smart, Manning. One of those chunks of iron can rip a hole in our side and tear us apart. End transmission. Now, Tom, call Astro. Tell him to cut down to one quarter. Aye, sir. Control deck to power deck. Power deck, aye. Astro, cut space speed one quarter. We're going to cut straight across the asteroid belt. One quarter space speed. Tom, turn on the magnoscope and watch every passing asteroid big enough to hold a spaceship. Aye, sir. We're taking a long chance on a slim hope. Radar bridge control, Link. There's a big one bearing down on us. Ship's steering vanes 2.2, starboard, 1 degree up. Hear that, Astro? Got it, Tom. Steering vane set. Give us a short blast, Astro. Back to Get a good look at it, Tom. Yes, sir. There was no ship on that space, hobo. They're coming fast, Captain Strong. Two of them bearing down on us. You'll have to walk a tight rope between them. All steering vanes 1.6 to port. Steering vanes set. Blast away, Astro. Hang on. That was a little too close. No rocket ship on either one of those babies, sir. Oh, this is a space-happy thing to do, but no, we're too deep in it now to turn back. I'm risking four lives and a rocket cruiser on a million-to-one shot. If we find Captain Parker, it'll be worth it, sir. Sure, but will our luck hold out? Oh, 
at four degrees to port. Five degrees up. Astro, don't spare the neutrons. A long blast this time. Hold tight. Open it up. Are we clearing it? Oh, are you all right? I'm seeing stars of the fifth magnitude. Yeah, I'm seeing a few myself. Oh. Yeah, we better, you better call Astro and Roger. Aye, right, sir. Control deck to power deck. Check in. Check in? I'm ready to check out. <laughs> Astro's okay, sir. All right, Astro. Go over the power deck for damage. Aye, right, sir. Control deck to radar bridge. Check in. Any damage up there? You're kidding. Not now, I'm not. So it looks like we're sitting pretty, doesn't it? Flying through the asteroid belt completely blind. Well, boys, I've checked the ship completely. Outside of the blackout on the radar bridge, we're still in one piece. Yeah, but how about that blackout, sir? We're sitting ducks for every piece of space junk in the belt. Well, not since we've cut our power, Roger. We're drifting in a steady orbit now, along with all the other space junk. Chances are we won't be hit, uh, unless we try to break out. Yeah, but if we don't break out, Skipper, we'll drift around in this junkyard forever. We can't even call for help. Well, the damage is to the antenna and the main power relay. The relay can be fixed up inside the ship, but the antenna means a trip outside on the hull. Oh, brother, nothing I like better than waltzing around in space. Well, start practicing right now, then, Roger. You, Astro, and I are going outside. Tom, you'll stay in here and work on the relay. Aye, aye, sir. All right. Suit up, boys, and meet me in the airlock in two minutes. Let me help you with your helmet. Don't bother. I can do it myself. All right, hot shot. Have it your way. And listen, you be careful you don't fall off the hull. I don't feel like fishing you out of space. All right, boys. Now that you've got your fish bowls on, check your oxygen tanks for twice normal pressure. Oxygen check. Okay, sir. Okay, here too, sir. Right. Let's go. Open the portal, Astro. Inner portal closed, sir. Equalize pressure. Pressure equalized, sir. Open the outer portal, Manning. Aye, sir. No, sir. sir. Hook up your static lines as soon as you're on the hull. And remember, keep your magnetic boots flat against the hull. Hello, Astro. Manning, check in. What's taking so long? What's going on out there, Roger? We're playing marbles with these pieces of space junk. Come back to your beauty nap and don't bother us. Come on, me that wrench, Astro. And there's adapters. Right, sir. But what's happened to all the space junk? Seems awful empty out here. Yeah, we may have drifted through, through the worst of it. Well, I don't know. It's too quiet after all the battering we took. Hand me that number three adapter, Astro. Yes, sir. You know, I'll never get used to working upside down like this and not falling off. Yeah, free fall has its advantages. And one of them is having no weight. That is strong. Astro, get down, quick. Here comes the media. Get down. One of the craters of Luna, that was a close one. Yes, too close. Now listen, Manning, if you'd stop gassing so much and keep your eyes peeled with... Roger. Captain Strong, the static line is torn. Look, he's off the ship. He's drifting out into space. Return to the exciting adventures of Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, in just a moment, so stand by. 
It's here. Yes, it's here. A brand new, exciting new premium in every package of Kellogg's Pep. And it's waiting for you right this instant at your grocery store. That's right, boys and girls. In every box of Kellogg's Pep, there's a magic moving picture eye. The magic eye is a gleaming plastic disc. And right in the center, there's an exciting picture. When you tilt the magic eye back and forth, the picture actually starts moving. There are pictures of planes. And TV and movie stars like Tom Corbett and Bob Hope of Paramount Pictures and the Bob Hope Show. Yes, sir. Every magic eye has a picture that's packed with famous people in action. You can collect as many as 16 different magic eyes. 16 different pictures all together. So easy to get, too. There's one waiting for you now, free, at no extra cost, in every single package of Kellogg's Pep. You'd better start your collection today. Remember, for your magic eye, ask Mom to buy P-E-P. Pep. While out on the hull of the rocket cruiser Polaris making emergency repairs in space... Roger Manning is suddenly swept off and sent spinning helplessly into the void. Look, Captain Strong. There he goes, drifting down along the hull. Listen, Astro, call Tom. Quick. Tell him to bring out a body jet. Hurry. I'm going down to the fins. Maybe I can catch him. Right, sir. Hello, Tom. Tom, come in. Right here, Astro. How's it going? Listen, Roger's been knocked off the ship. He's drifting out in space. Great. Captain Strong wants you to bring out a body jet. Oh, no. By the time I suit up and get out there with a body jet, Roger will be out of sight. We'll, we'll never find him. What else can we do? Wait. I've got an idea. I'm going to maneuver the ship toward him. You what? Hang on out there. I'm firing up our rocket. Oh, brother. Spaceman's luck, pal. <laughs> Who fired our rockets? Tom did, sir. He's maneuvering the ship toward Roger. He figures it's Roger's only chance. Well, that's, that's risky. He might... He might fry Roger in the exhaust blast. No, but maybe... Maybe it's the better gamble. Better hold on, sir. I'm starting to cut around. Hello, Tom. Come in. Come in, sir. Well, what's your hitting? Don't over-control or, or you'll spin us completely around. Well, doing my best. Now, ease off now. Hold her straight and level as you can. You're heading right for Roger. You and Astro, we have to get him on the first pass, sir. I know. And we'll do it. You cut your power. Now, let her drift. Right, sir. Captain Strong, we're going to miss him. We're going to miss him by at least ten feet. Blast it. Tom. Tom, quick. Oh, wait a minute, sir. Play out my static line. I'm going to push off and try to grab him. Wait, this, sir. Hang on to my line, sir. Here I go. Just suffering from shock. Those blood pills will fix him up. Oh. Hey, he's coming out of it. What's going on here? What am I doing in this bunk? You were knocked off the ship, Roger. Me? Uh-huh. And we had to fish you out of space. Ah, you're full of media guys. Well, it's the truth, Manning. If it hadn't been for Tom and Astro, you'd be a part of the asteroid belt now. Just another piece of space junk. Yeah, I suppose I would. And Tom and Astro, they... That's right, Manning. Now, you just rest there. I'm going topside and start plotting our course out of here. Tom, Astro, you stay with him. I don't need anybody staying with me. I'm okay. You're not getting out of that bunk. We need all personnel in top condition. But don't forget, we still have to find Captain Parker. I'll see you later, boys. <clears throat> you want something, Roger? No, uh, just, uh... Well, tell me something. Yeah, 
What did we have that fight about? Uh Uh-oh, here we go again. (laughs) Does it make that much difference, Roger? No, that's what I was driving at. Doesn't make any difference at all. And, uh, well, I'm not very good at saying these things, but... What you guys did for me and all, I... uh, Oh, cut it out, will you, Manning? You'll have me crying. Yeah, relax and act natural, will you? I go blow your jet. Don't miss the next action-packed adventure with Tom Corbett and the Space Cadets on Thursday when the search for Captain Parker and the missing rocket scout is resumed and the boys rocket into danger. Tune in same time, same station for the next thrilling interplanetary adventure with... Tom Corbett! Space Cadets! Brought to you by Kellogg's Pep, the build-up wheat cereal. Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, starring Frankie Thomas, can also be seen on television and appears in the comic sections of many of America's leading newspapers. Look for it daily and in weekend editions. Featured in the cast are Al Markham as Astro, Jan Merlin as Roger Manning, and Edward Bryce as Captain Strong. Today's program was written by Jack Weinstock and Willie Gilbert, directed by Drex Hines. Jackson Beck speaking.